What is up guys, Anders here with another Black Desert video for you. Today we're going to go over the patch for this week, but before we do that, I want to thank supporters of this channel. You guys help keep these videos going, so thank you so much for the support. If you want to help out, you can do so by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, liking or disliking this video, and hitting that bell icon. Bell is good. So please ding the bell to get notified when I upload my next video. Now this week we have the release of Odalita. The new region can be found southwest of Dregan. You can start the main story questline for Odalita in Velia if you are level 60 and have completed the Camasylvia questline. I'll do a full walkthrough video in the coming days of the main story so you can find out what you need to do for that. For events we have the trade with the trio event which is a challenge event so what the Y tab. Every day you will get three supply boxes that you can hand in to the NPC in Odraxia, the capital of Odalita. You choose which buff you want and then at the end of the event the NPC who received the most will give the NA and EU servers an additional buff. So if enough people give the item drop rate NPC the challenge tab dailies, then we will get a 50% drop rate boost for a week starting in two weeks. Travel with P event requires you to be level 56 and simply you just travel around Odalita with Ruler P. You talk to her in a bunch of different places and you get a lot of contribution XP for completing it. That's pretty much it. Flower in the Darkness event will have you gather Delosha plants, which can be found around Odalita, but a lot of them can be also found in the main capital as well, Odraxia. Three of the Delosha flowers can be manufactured into a Delosha flower decoration that you then hand in to Loman and Odraxia for a Merasia's elixir recipe. Now this item combined with one of the existing perfumes, so Swiftness or Courage, will have you make a perfume that will not disappear if you die. That's huge. Flower of the Burning Moon is also an event that will reward you with 5 Mass of Pure Magic, a 60 stack, and an Enhancement Help Kit 2 for completing the Odalita questline. You have one month to do this particular event and it will be once per family. So if you want to repeat that on multiple characters to get multiple 60 stacks, you unfortunately can't do that. We have Odalita login rewards for 3 weeks as well as new and returner login rewards. The Odalita login rewards will give you a 70 stack inventory, 2 pets, old moon book, comma blessing, and a 7 day value pack as well as some other goodies for completing it. Really good login rewards. We have new pearl shop outfits as well, the Vadira set for all classes including the new Hishashin just because the, the hash Vadira set actually came out in Korea today. You can buy a bundle with 30 day value pack and a few other goodies for only a little bit more than the outfit price. So I do recommend if you want to get the Vadiris outfit already, you were going to pay money for it, just get that bundle it's a little bit more expensive, maybe a few more dollars, but you get a lot more for your money. Musa received the Royal Enforcer outfit as well. Uh, you know, with bundles, you can buy the outfit. It's uh, okay looking, I think. Uh, the hat's a bit wonky, but you know, if you like it, you go for it, I guess. If you like to enhance the Master Enhancing Bundle, look pretty good. Seem to be geared towards Black Star Enhancing since they give us flawless magical black stones. Um, I usually don't buy these packs, but if you're someone that enhances a lot, I'm sure these would be pretty useful to you. The Humbug outfit is also on sale again uh, because even though it's not New Year's, it's Chuzuk in Korea. And so Humbug makes sense for that. Twitch drops are active again, so you can watch any streamer to get some items. They don't have to be partnered. It can be anyone just playing the game. One hour will give you a game pass, five hours for a seven day old moon book, nine hours for a level 57 travel kit, and every day for 30 minutes of viewing, you will get 10 cron stones once per day. So 10 crons a day. There is also a coupon code for some Adraxia storage, an enhancement A kit, and a 30 advice of Valk. So make sure to redeem it in game if you are on Steam or through the website if you are not on Steam. As for the patch, we have more clues on how to get the Rich Merchant's Ring. When a world boss spawns, PvP will still be available outside of the world boss areas. You can now enter the Pit of Undying in all regions, not just Velia. Musician ranks now go up to C with quests available for promotion. Guild skills no longer show their cooldown on the normal UI. Thank you for that. And instead they appear in the Guild Skill tab if you need to know how much time is left. Kafir's record was added as a new adventure journal, rewarding you with 500 Kafir's. I'll have a video on that in the coming days. Four new areas will also add it in Odalita. I'll do grind briefs on these spots in the coming days as well. I did half an hour at the 250 area and found it very chill, but the dusts 
aren't dropping. So I'm not sure how good it's going to be in the long run. We'll have to see. I'm going to do a little bit more testing for that. Fallen God was added as well. You can order the flame you need to craft Fallen God from the central market or you can grind the Turo Zone for the Straight Drop or the Embers, which you need 100 Embers to craft the armor. More on that on a separate video, however. Black Star Helmet was also added. You need Rift Fragment and Spectre Energy to craft it through the questline. Spectre Energy, by the way, drops in higher percentage chance at the 250 area, although... In the little bit of time I've been there, no drops yet. New Awakening Crystals were also added. The PvE Crystal drops from the 250 area and the 310 area. And the PvP Crystal drops from the 300 AP Trio Grind spot. New Fish were also added to Odalita Waters. They retain freshness price a little bit longer than normal fish. You can now sail the waters south of Odalita as well. And the current maxes out at 10, which is not bad. New Foods and Elixirs were also added. I'll go over the details on how to craft these items in a separate video. Hunting Quests were added with a new area to hunt in Odalita. The area drops an item needed to craft the Master Matchlock. So if you're a hunter, uh, that's something very important for you to check out. New Furniture items were added for Odalita as well as hunting blue whales so if you hunt blue whales regularly now you can get a furniture item through that Berserker, Valkyrie, Wizard, Kunoichi, Dark Knight, Striker and Lan all received awakening PvP damage buffs Hashashin received the Rabam skills and Black Spirit Rage skills which is pretty huge one of the Rabams allows you to teleport at a decent range behind your opponent effectively giving you another teleport or block jump style skill but this time it's protected the Rabam is called Mirage Assault Assault. You'll probably want to take Prophecy Blade and Mirage Assault as your two Rabams, but uh, that's just me from previous testing about a couple of weeks ago when I was testing it out on Tusk Server. And that's pretty much it for this patch notes for the week, guys. We essentially received part one of the Odalita region with hopefully other content like Tagging System, which we want, or Zeka Outfit, which we want, and Bond Skills for Awakening. Hopefully coming soon, maybe next week, in the coming weeks, hopefully not more than that. If you are below the gear level and you think you can't do Odalita, you can still go through the main story, guys. It's not really that hard. You don't need to do a lot of combat and you don't need a lot of gear to complete it. Are you guys excited for the new region? Will you be going for the new accessories? Let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, thanks again for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.